From a very early time, Wagner began studying the spinal cord. Not many people were talking about the spinal cord because we did not have many problems in the 50s because we were not working on computers. But Wegner was very interested in the spinal cord and here he sits with doctor of medicine studying the spinal cord. So this is in Danish, but this is actually your spinal cord is in balance when you stand. Mm. But if you sit wrong, if you have something here preventing you from arching, this is a wrong position. This is a proper position for, for when you sit, if you're able to arch and you can have some support up here. So where you can see he was studying the Chinese chair, he moved on to next level, removing this thing here, preventing you from getting a good support. At the same time he was uh, doing the wishbone chair, he started developing the chair in 1949. He came out with this version and he never ever looked back. He never ever made any more chairs with something here preventing you from arching. So this was typical. Wegner only take the good stuff into next model and, and leave behind what didn't work. So this is regarded the most important design of Wegner and it was an international breakthrough for Danish design. In 1960, Kennedy and Nixon were having the first political television debate on Iceland and they were sitting in the chair. And we had Obama sitting in it in 2009 for the COP15 in Copenhagen. And then the Danish crown prince, uh, Frederick, who will be our king eventually, he came to visit our workshop and he also ag agreed to sit in it if we had a photographer ready. <laughs> this is the chair in an interior magazine in 1950. And basically this magazine meant that there was suddenly a huge demand for this kind of furniture. And that was very important for Danish design to be in these magazines in the US with these pieces. So I like you to understand that when we took over from Johannes Hansen, we were very lucky because we had Wegner alive, we had existing pieces we could look at and we had very good drawings. So every piece was put in production as a prototype and we started all over, also correcting things from the past together with Wegner. And today the quality is higher than ever before. We have done many, many improvements to this chair, but one of them is of course that we cut the armrests out of wood from the same tree. So the center part here comes from the center part here and right and left arm cut in extension. So it's like mirror cut. It's like opening a book. So this is the new headquarter of Lego made by Icelandic Olafur Eliasson. And he used the chair and he used also office swivel chair for this pre prestigious uh, project. Yes, and these are some of the molds we use for turning. So we make a copy of one of these molds. So the cowhorn chair, also called PP505, is one of his uh, smallest chairs. I always say this is, this is a chair for the female, but I mean, I think men like it too. But here you have right and left arm and it's very clear that they are also cut in extension to get this beautiful grain structure. And this is the bull chair called PP 518. And here Wagner did not uh, spare anything. He wanted a design that put human first comfort wise. So he made it spacious 
And I remember when I was in Japan, I said, this is for the sumo wrestler. I'm going to show you. <laughs> I wanted just to show you, this is a uh, Burma teak wood for the cow horn. And you, you can see that the joints here are going all the way through. So this is extremely beautiful uh, grain structure. And this is the bull chair. And these are the biscuits that are going through here to keep them together. So these are the old rosewood stock from 1960s, 70s that we used to keep together. Yeah, the minimal chair is very popular in Japan. It's actually a version that Beckner made for his own house because he didn't have space for the bowl chair. Made out of stainless steel and all the steel we make in Denmark. Again, you can see that we turn and you can see that we number right and left arm. So we always know when they come back from Copenhagen Hardwood, which ones belong together. So you can see it's a quite complex piece. And again, I can show you this one is from the workshop. So this is number 12 and this is number 12. And then you have solid wood here and here. But here, the grain structure is different from here. So Wegner put uh, in a layer of veneer separating this and this to make it look nice. And this cross is holding right and left arm together. So this is the first PP model that Wegner made for us. In 1987, Wegner created the final dining chair for a restaurant. And here you can see him in the workshop together with Einar and they are discussing the seating comfort. So it's, it's a quite big piece that we steam bent. We put it through CNC and then it, it, we cut off this and then we sand, machine sand and hand sand and then we use paper cord, which you can clean if you use good Danish soap. This is John, this is from last yesterday evening. He is from the US, but he has been working for PP for many, many, many years. And he's doing a lot of the arms on the chairs that you are receiving in Japan. We also have a three-legged where you can actually stack the one with the wooden seat you can stack, but it's for very suitable for round tables. Um, I'll just uh, quickly show you the valet chair. The valet chair is from 1953 and the first customer was the Danish King Frederick. It, it was made so you could uh, hang your jacket and your trousers by lifting up the seat. And then here you have room for your keys when you go to bed at night. So it's a very complex production and we, of course, do not mix the wood. So this wood, this piece and this piece are also coming from the same tree. And here we have uh, the old original Johannes Hansen mold that we use for turning and for copying. And then we glue the hanger onto afterwards. Yeah, so we have a lot of uh, easy chairs in the collection and I'm not going to talk about all of them. I'm going to focus on the one you can see in Coco shop. 